The Countdown, Revealing Biblical Signs and Nostradamus Prophecies of the Apocalypse. Nostradamus, whose full name was Michel de Nostradamus, was a French astrologer, physician, and reputed seer who lived in the 16th century. He is most famous for his collection of quatrains, which he published in a book titled Lay Prophecies, The Prophecies, in 1555. Nostradamus's quatrains are written in a cryptic and symbolic style, making them open to interpretation. Here are some key points about Nostradamus and his prophecies. Life and background, Nostradamus was born on December 14, 1503, in Saint-Rémy-de-Provence, France. He received a classical education and later became a physician, studying medicine in Montpellier. He was also well-versed in astrology and the occult. Prophecies, Nostradamus claimed to have the ability to foresee the future and wrote his quatrains as a means of recording his visions. He wrote nearly 1,000 quatrains, each consisting of four lines of verse. Cryptic style, Nostradamus intentionally wrote his prophecies in a vague and enigmatic manner. He used symbolism, word play, and anagrams, which has made his writings subject to various interpretations over the centuries. Historical events, many of Nostradamus's quatrains have been retroactively associated with historical events, including wars, revolutions, and natural disasters. However, these connections are often made after the events have occurred, leading to skepticism about the accuracy of his predictions. Popularity, Nostradamus gained fame during his lifetime for his almanacs and later became renowned for his prophetic writings. His work has remained popular through the centuries, with believers and skeptics alike attempting to decipher his quatrains. Skepticism and Criticism While some people believe that Nostradamus's writings contain genuine prophecies, many historians, scholars, and scientists consider them to be more a product of his time, reflecting the political and social concerns of the Renaissance era. Legacy Regardless of the validity of his predictions, Nostradamus's work has left a lasting legacy in the world of literature, mysticism, and popular culture. His quatrains continue to be studied, and his name is often associated with the idea of predicting the future. Have you ever wondered about the mysteries behind Nostradamus' prophetic abilities? Join us today as we unravel the enigmatic prophecies of the legendary seer, Michel de Nostradam. Nostradamus, a renowned French physician and astrologer from the 16th century, is famous for his accurate predictions that have intrigued and baffled scholars for centuries. His prophecies cover a wide range of topics, from natural disasters to political events, wars, and even the fates of individuals. Nostradamus used intricate and symbolic language to describe future events, leaving room for interpretation. Let us dive deep into his most famous prophecies and analyze their meanings. One of his most renowned predictions is the Great Fire of London, which occurred in 1666. Nostradamus wrote, The blood of the just will be lacking in London, burned up in the fire of 66. His words seem to have perfectly foreseen this tragic event. Another startling prophecy is Nostradamus' mention of Adolf Hitler. He wrote, from the depths of the west of Europe, a young child will be born of poor people. He who by his tongue will seduce a great troop. These words have been associated with Hitler's rise to power and his ability to manipulate the masses. But it doesn't stop there. Nostradamus also predicted the Twin Towers tragedy. His words, the sky will burn at 45 degrees latitude. Fire approaches the great new city, seem eerily accurate when we consider the events that unfolded on September 11, 2001. Nostradamus wrote a series of quatrains, cryptic verses that held hidden meanings. His prophecies explored a wide range of subjects, from war and disasters to the rise and fall of empires. Many claim that Nostradamus accurately foresaw major world events such as the French Revolution, world wars, and even the rise of Adolf Hitler. But deciphering Nostradamus' prophecies is no easy task. His writings are filled with symbolism and metaphors that require deep interpretation. Critics argue that Nostradamus' predictions are merely vague and open to interpretation. But believers see his prophecies as evidence of his extraordinary insight into the future. Whether you view Nostradamus as a gifted seer or a misunderstood scholar, his influence on our understanding of prophecy is undeniable. So, the next time you hear a prediction about the future, perhaps take a moment to wonder, could it be the whispers of Nostradamus? Thanks for watching this video on Decoding Nostradamus, Unraveling the Prophecies of a Mystic. Although Nostradamus' prophecies are intriguing, they are often open to interpretation. Some believe that his predictions are simply coincidences or vague statements. Others argue that his predictions serve as warnings to humanity, urging us to take action and change our course. Regardless of your beliefs, Nostradamus' predictions continue to captivate and inspire.
we invite you to delve further into the mysteries of his prophecies, explore their meanings, and draw your own conclusions. Thank you for watching this comprehensive analysis of Nostradamus predictions. Have you ever wondered if the end of the world is near? Many ancient religious texts, including the Bible, contain predictions about the future. Today, we delve into the Bible's prophecies on the coming apocalypse. Throughout history, humanity has experienced calamities that seem to align with the predictions of the Bible. Natural disasters, like volcanoes erupting, hurricanes devastating entire cities, and earthquakes rocking the foundations of our civilization. The Bible also warns of wars and conflicts that will engulf the world. We witness nations at odds with one another, escalating tensions, and the birth of new military technologies that could unravel the very fabric of our existence. Additionally, the Bible speaks of chaos and violence in society. We see innocent lives taken, acts of terror, and a growing sense of unrest and injustice. Is this the unraveling of the world as the Bible predicted? Matthew 24 1-51 NIV 1 Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. 2 Do you see all these things? He asked. Truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another, every one will be thrown down. 3 As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? 4 Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. 5 For many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. 6 You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. 7 Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. 8 All these are the beginning of birth pains. 9 Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. 10 At that time many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, 11 And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. 12 Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, 13 But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. 14 And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. 15 So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand, 16 Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. 17 Let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. 18 Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. 19 How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. 20 Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. 21 For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. 22 If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive but for the sake of the elect those days will be shortened. 23 At that time if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Messiah. Or, there he is. Do not believe it. 24 For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. 25 See, I have told you ahead of time. 26 So if anyone tells you, There he is, out in the wilderness, do not go out, or, here he is, in the inner rooms, do not believe it. 27 For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. 28 Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. 29 Immediately after the distress of those days the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. 30 Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, with power and great glory. 31 And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. 32 Now learn this lesson from the fig tree, as soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. 33 Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. 34 Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. 35 Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will never pass away. 36 But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. 37 As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. 38 For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. 39 And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. 
42 men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. 41 Two women will be grinding with a hand mill, one will be taken and the other left. 42 Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. 43 But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. 44 So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. 45 Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom the Master has put in charge of the servants in His household to give them their food at the proper time. 46 It will be good for that servant whose Master finds him doing so when he returns. 47 Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. 48 But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, My Master is staying away a long time. 49 And he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. 50 The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he is not aware of. 51 He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Re we living in the end times? Many people wonder about what the future holds and how prophecy will be fulfilled. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus gives us a glimpse into what is to come. Let's explore this important chapter together. Verse 3 starts with the disciples asking Jesus about the signs of His coming and the end of the age. Jesus responds by saying, Watch out that no one deceives you. It's a warning to stay vigilant and discerning in a world full of falsehoods. As we continue reading, Jesus mentions wars and rumors of wars, nations rising against nations. These conflicts intensify as we approach the end times, reminding us that peace is fleeting and the world's brokenness will persist. Jesus also speaks of famines, earthquakes, and various calamities that will affect the earth. These natural disasters serve as reminders that creation itself is groaning, waiting for the final restoration. Moreover, Jesus predicts persecutions and hatred towards His followers. He says, You will be hated by all nations because of Me. This reminds us that our faith may cost us, but we can find strength in Jesus' promise to be with us until the end. In verse 14, Jesus proclaims, This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. It's a call to share the good news, to reach out to the lost, and to play our part in fulfilling this prophecy. Jesus concludes this chapter by describing the final signs that will indicate the imminent return of the Son of Man. He encourages us to be ready, for no one knows the exact hour or day, emphasizing the importance of being prepared. In conclusion, Matthew chapter 24 unveils prophecies that serve as a guide for believers today. While we cannot predict the exact timeline of future events, we can trust that God's word will be fulfilled. Thanks for watching this video. We are unveiling the mysteries of the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation, the final book of the Bible, is often regarded as the most mysterious and enigmatic. Written by the Apostle John, it offers a prophetic vision of the end times and the ultimate victory of God's kingdom. The book of Revelation, often simply referred to as Revelation or the Apocalypse, is the last book of the New Testament in the Christian Bible. It is also considered one of the most mysterious and symbolic books in the Bible. The book of Revelation is traditionally attributed to the Apostle John, although there has been some debate over its authorship. Revelation is a book of prophecy and apocalyptic literature. It is written in a highly symbolic and visionary style, using vivid imagery and allegorical language to convey its message. The central theme of Revelation is the ultimate triumph of God's kingdom over evil, the final judgment of the world, and the establishment of a new heaven and a new earth. It addresses the suffering and persecution faced by early Christians and provides them with hope for the future. The book is filled with a series of visions that John experiences on the island of Patmos. These visions include symbolic figures such as the Lamb of God, representing Jesus Christ, the four horsemen of the Apocalypse, and centuries ago, this captivating text was shrouded in symbolism and veiled in secrecy. Many have tried to decipher its meaning, but the true essence of the book of Revelation lies in its message of hope and redemption. Through visions and divine revelations, John paints a picture of a world in turmoil, where evil seeks to overpower good. But amidst chaos, the book of Revelation reminds us that God is always in control. Its prophecies warn us of the perils and tribulations that lie ahead, urging us to remain steadfast in our faith. The book of Revelation teaches us to trust in God's plan, even in the face of daunting challenges. While its imagery might be unsettling, the book of Revelation ultimately offers a powerful reminder of the triumph of light over darkness. It serves as a beacon of faith, inspiring us to persevere and hold firmly to our beliefs. So, as we journey through the pages of this extraordinary book, let us remember the eternal truth it conveys, 
that God's love prevails, and His ultimate victory is certain. Thank you for joining us today as we unveiled the mysteries of the book of Revelation. We hope this video has shed light on this profound and captivating text. But amidst these dark prophecies, there is also hope. The Bible speaks of a time when goodness and righteousness will prevail. A time of peace and unity among all people, regardless of their race or beliefs. A time when love conquers all. Welcome to the Countdown, revealing 10 Biblical Signs of the Apocalypse. Today, we explore the astonishing signs that the end of the world, as described in the Bible, is drawing near. Brace yourself as we unravel the truth that has been written for centuries. Signs 1, Wars and Rumors of Wars. Throughout history, conflicts have ravaged nations, revealing the fragility of global stability. 2. Earthquakes and Natural Disasters. Tremors shake the very foundation of our existence, reminding us of our vulnerability. 3. False Prophets and Deception. Beware of those who claim to know the truth, for their intentions may be far from just. 4. Global Turmoil and Unrest. Societal divisions and injustice spread like wildfire, tearing communities apart. 5. Famines and Scarcity. Widespread hunger breaks the spirit of many, afflicting the most vulnerable among us. 6. Pestilences and Plagues. Illnesses and diseases sweep through humanity, leaving devastation and fear in their wake. 7. Signs in the Sky. Mysterious celestial events capture our attention, whispering of something greater on the horizon. 8. Increase in Wickedness. Moral decay corrupts society, testing our values and principles. 9. Abandonment of Faith. Spirituality wanes, leaving a void in the hearts of those who seek higher meaning. 10. Jerusalem's Plight. The holy city faces trials, acting as a symbolic fulcrum for the world's destiny. These are just the beginning. Join us on this extraordinary journey as we uncover 90 more signs from the Bible that foretell the apocalypse. Stay tuned, and be prepared for what lies ahead. While the future may seem uncertain, the message of the Bible serves as both a warning and a beacon of hope. It is up to us to interpret these prophecies and take action to shape the destiny of our world. Narrator, thank you for watching The End is Nigh, unveiling Bible prophecies on the coming apocalypse. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more intriguing content.